pop-up video time. I call it a pop-up video because it's something I didn't have planned and it just popped up. What I have here is a old homemade power supply, something I made I don't know how long ago, probably 25 years ago, exclusively from Radio Shack parts. Radio Shack project box, Radio Shack switch, I'm sure that's a Radio Shack LED and basal mount holder for it. Radio Shack stick-on feet, which have seemed to turn a grayish color. Huh, that's kind of weird. They were completely black. But anyway, this power supply has developed an issue. So I'm going to repair it. These are two outputs. One of them is regulated. You have the AC input over here. One side is regulated 9 volts. The other is just off the uh, filter capacitor unregulated. And that voltage with a 12.6 volt transformer after full wave rectification and filtering that, that can go up to uh, 18 volts. And the regulated side should be 9 volts. The problem is it doesn't regulate anymore. And I'll set up a little circuit here and plug it in. Measure the voltage. So I figure about 18 volts. I have a yellow LED. I think that's yellow. 1K resistor. So we'll drop a couple volts through that LED. We'll have about 16 volts across that resistor. Just put a small load on this, make sure it's working or not working, whatever the case may be. Uh, with 16 volts squared is 256 divided by 1000. So we're a little over the uh, maximum power of that resistor, but it's a quick test, so I don't think we'll have an issue there. I'm not sure which outputs what. I'll turn that on. And I'll measure. See if I can get the meter in the shot. Now, of course, it's going to be glare. I need to. Well, if I ever move to another house, I need to put, set my bench up where there's no window in the way. 16.6 something volts. So that's probably the unregulated side, and we'll switch over to the what's supposed to be regulated. Let's see what we get here. Fourteen or fifteen volts. Should be nine volts. So we lost regulation. Well, let's pop this thing open and see how I wired up this supply back in the day. And we're in. Look at this rat's nest. Like Dave would say on EEV blog, this is kind of how you doing. Kmart must have had a blue light special on wire the day I built this because I certainly used plenty of wire. But anyway, we have a transformer here. It's a 12 volt center tap secondary. I just capped off the center tap, didn't use it. Then we have the full wave bridge here, or full bridge rectifier, and a 2200 microfarad Nichicon. And I forgot to mention, this is a 450 milliamp transformer on the secondary and after the full wave and filtering we come to the 317 regulator adjustment pot and there's a resistor for the LED indicator light over here and a small capacitor on the output of the regulator helps improve its 
um, transient performance. A lot of things I would do different nowadays. I'd probably put everything inside this part of the case so the lid, when you remove it, is free. This is actually meant to be the lid. But I didn't do it that way. I would have used barrel jacks instead of these uh, three and a half inch audio type jacks. I uh, don't really care for these perf boards. They're meant to emulate a socket board so you can design your circuit and transfer it directly over because each row of holes is connected with copper. Well, the main problem with these the copper lifts off easy and you can break your circuit. Might have been what happened here. Okay, and I'm going to power this up and try to adjust the pot here and see what happens. Okay, see if I can get the meter in the shot without a glare. It doesn't matter which way I turn it, there's some sort of glare. Oh, and there's a cat going by. And I just barely touched this in it made a big difference you wiggle this thing why just wiggling it could be a solder joint or the potentiometer is really sensitive right now it is too sensitive the slightest turn it you know, that's 10 volts, and I'll just turn it. You won't even see me move, probably, and it, it'll it jump. See, we'll go back to... That's 10, almost. And I'll do, like, a tiniest turn. Now we're down below 8 volts. So, yeah, this is too sensitive. But the regulator's doing the job. So I might put a resistor in series here and see if that lessens the uh, touchiness of this. I could take that out and just use voltage divider resistors for 9 volts, but I'd have to find some pretty precise values. But I think just going the route of lessening the sensitivity of this potentiometer is the way to go. designed this thing. I can't even get it out without taking the transformer out. Send them back to design school. Well, here's another JATCAD schematic. So our circuit here, we have the secondary of the transformer goes through the full-way bridge or full bridge rectifier. <laughs> and it goes through the uh, uh, 2200 microfarad capacitor and of course I switch it here on the DC side of the full bridge rectifier and the output of the unregulated side is taken off here into the full way or <laughs> full way LM317 adjustable regulator the out goes to the one end of the pot the other end goes to ground wiper arm to the adjust pin the out goes to the stuff on the output side so if I put a resistor down here, it'll remove the low end voltage range of the adjustment, which I'm not going to worry about anyway. And it would spread the upper range across this potentiometer, making it not so touchy. And I won't have to move this potentiometer. I just have to uh, unsolder one wire and pop a resistor in and put the wire on the other end of the resistor because that wire, this wire here goes to ground. So I'll try that out. Come back. Okay, I got it apart and yeah, I did see some lifted traces but it wasn't affecting the circuit so I kind of flooded those in with solder and took care of that. I went with a 4.7K resistor because that put the 9 volts right in the middle of adjustment. Also you notice that 
the trace is broken right here but that's by design because I don't want this screw being hot because it goes through the bottom of the case all right I'll assemble this thing and do a quick test okay I have the board mounted back in transformer back in here's the resistor the wires moved over now the potentiometer is not quite centered but nearly centered for 9 volt output it was kind of crammed at the top where a light touch would make the voltage jump so now I can if I turn this see now it says 12 a slight turn before would hit 15 volts one problem with this meter has a curved top so it tends to catch reflections so now I'll adjust this yeah much easier and that's about as close I'm going to get to 9 volts if you want to stay on here I'll put this back together and show you some of my LED trinkets that's why I got the supply out to play with my LED trinkets oh real quickly uh, this is where the resistor was placed 4.7 K right here okay the LED trinket time I call them trinkets because I never really used them you know this one I made I could have used it in a uh, like a bike light I sold it in inside acrylic uh, hot glued it in there so it could be uh, watertight but this could be like a bike light or maybe put it on the back of the lawn tractor when I'm mowing up by the road you know people driving 50 60 miles an hour and uh, just helps to be seen I guess okay so I got the power supply here and I'll fire this one up and that thing is that's really bright I use those Cree screen master LEDs they're meant for those um, those gigantic video screens sometimes they use these type of LEDs and they're oval see they're oval so they may they're made to direct the light kind of in an oval pattern so I kind of aimed them to the side so they could be seen at a fairly wide angle so that's that one let me plug in the next one here is the blue version don't know why I made it but there it is and that is really bright blue I only use three of them because of the higher voltage forward voltage of the blue color LEDs so that is quite nice fades out as the capacitor discharges on to the next one next one is looks like these are white LEDs in a waterproof box enclosure and wow that is nice they're kind of a neutral white color white angle I don't know what the angle is probably like 30 degrees or something I know the uh, when I pointed at the camera it, it makes the uh, aperture close down and it kind of mutes the sound so you don't hear it as loud I can hear it going so if you hear a click in my voice kind of gets quiet that's what's doing that but anyway wow those are neat nice and bright if I lived out in the country I would put these around light things up with them next LED trinket thingy I took a thick piece of acrylic and drilled holes in it and put the LEDs in and I ran the wire through the side kinda so this wouldn't get strained or pulled on wanted to see what kinda neat effect this would produce 
Okay, turn it on. It's kind of dirty. Yeah, it's kind of a, like a uh, light piping effect. Has a really neat look to it. If I took a big long piece and did a whole bunch of LEDs, uh, it'd make like a neat effect. You can see it's uh, not super bright or anything. What did I use? 100 ohm resistor. So yeah, that's pretty neat. Those are cool white LEDs. Last but not least is this little bit larger box with 15 amber LEDs in it. And it has this three and a half inch connector. I'm not sure why I use that, but anyway, let's turn it on. Whoa! Man, that thing is bright. Fairly narrow beam. Probably 20 degrees, 20-25 degrees LEDs, I think. Not sure what I would use this for, but I made it. I'm just kind of an LED junkie and I just make things. Well, there you have it. My LED trinkets and my repaired power supply. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching.